Good afternoon, everybody. Pastor David, good afternoon. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Uh, you know, recently you, this topic has come up, and I'm just a little interested in in this because uh, the Jesus Movement uh, movie came out. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and it's getting, I mean, it's people are from our church are seeing it and, mm -hmm. and enjoying it. There's been some good comments on it. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's, uh, it's really opening the door for people to uh, get some type of glimpse on, on the Jesus movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to ask, because it seems like there's a lot of younger people that are seeing it or I watching it. So. Do you believe that this movie was intended for the young people only? No, no, of course not. The Jesus movement is something that, uh, or just Jesus is somebody that obviously is for every person, no matter what age or, or ethnicity or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No. So the movie, I think, is an interesting approach and an attempt to kind of like give to people a glimpse into how the Lord in the past has moved and, uh, and gives to us an insight into um, and Greg Laurie's particular uh, involvement in it and his perspective of it and things like that. So no, this movie is not made just for a certain age group. It's obviously a, a movie that is uh, is intended for everybody. I don't I don't think that it was um, uh, intended to be a documentary. I think what it is is an encapsulation of certain memories that people from that particular mm -hmm. experience and that time. You know, it's an encapsulation of, of what they remember and how their perspective uh, on that is being presented on, on the screen. And so there are those who think that it's for a certain age group, a genre. And in fact, you know, <laughs> there was one young man who said he's from this particular generation. I think he calls himself a Gen Z who really doesn't feel that uh, people should have any any critical remarks about anything that relates to the way the Holy Spirit moves amongst his generation because after all we're too old and almost dead <laughs> and therefore we have no perspective and and I think that's uh, extremely short-sighted and really indicative of a very immature mind right. and spiritually immature individual Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that the youth shall lead the elders, <laughs> you know, and that, that, that they're going to be entrusted with that without any elders' responsibility of transmitting truth and, and helping to form their faith, etc. I mean, that's what older people are intended to do, right? So, from that perspective, I believe that the, uh, the movie is intended to give a, a certain sense of the time and with a hope that a new generation will mm -hmm. arise to experience the depth and, and the joy of what, what made up the actual revival called the Jesus Movement. I'll tell you, there are two things, John, that, that, in, that were the heart and soul of it, is uh, the power of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, and Pastor Chuck Smith, um, was used mightily by God in the lives of, of many young people, myself included. I was 20 years old, actually 19, the first time I entered into the Calvary Chapel, that small, that small chapel they used to have um, so long ago. Uh, I was 19. I was there for a few months, and then I had to go into the military, and I, I served my country for a couple of years and wasn't there at that time when they... The, uh, moved into the tent. I came home on leave, and I'd go. I went to the uh, the, the the tent where they had uh, a lot of worship in the Word of God mm -hmm. and all. But I wasn't able to partake in that for for quite a while. So, I think that what we need to be aware of is the heart of the Jesus movement. And I haven't seen the movie, um, but I will tell you this: the heart of the Jesus movement was never Chuck Smith. The heart of the Jesus movement wasn't a young man named Lonnie Frisbee. Mm -hmm. And it isn't a, a, any young man like Greg was at that time or, or Don McClure or Mike McIntosh or so many others who were there from the beginning. The heart of the Jesus movement was never a man. It was never a woman. 
It was Jesus. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Chuck had a, a burden that was given to him for the hippies. Kay, his wife, was the one who would weep and pray for them. And, K- and Chuck would tell us this, and I've heard him say it many times, that he, had a, he actually had an adverse reaction to these hippies because they needed to cut the hair and they needed to take a bath and they needed to put on shoes. And he speaks about those hippies, including me, because I was part of that group. And um, I still remember the story of the hippies who put their toes in the communion (laughs) cup holders. And it made me remember that that happened to me because I didn't wear shoes. We were barefoot. They wanted to, to, um, at one time, uh, the elders of the church were upset because we would come in, people like me would come in uh, barefooted and they had new carpet and and they were mad because uh, the feet would, would dirty up the carpet. And, and they, they complained that they saw kids who got their toes stuck in the communion cup holder. I, I, I was, they, I'm not saying they were talking about me. Of course I'm not. But I did get my toes stuck in that. So it made me laugh <laughs> because I wouldn't wear shoes. And nobody did. And so Chuck said if, if, if a new carpet will keep people from coming, rip up the carpets. Mm. That was Chuck's real heart. Chuck was not a, a timid man by any means. He, he was not a weak man by any means. Chuck was a, a strong man who actually had to be broken by the Lord so that he would have a heart for this particular group of people. And so I, I would never portray him as, as weak, just wrestling and crying and, and all of that. Perhaps he did and, and, and all. I never heard him tell stories in that particular way, though I, I do know that he was broken and perhaps he did, you know, do something like that. I, all I know is that when I first encountered Chuck, he was 43 years old, mm. you know, um, and Lonnie Frisbee was my age, he was 20. And as a 20 year old and a 43 year old, God used Pastor Chuck to, to teach us God's Word. Chuck wasn't into emotionalism. Chuck was into the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And because of that, that's how we all got saved. Mm. And right when you start speaking that, we hear music in the background. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, You know, now that uh, you have a movie, not you, uh, there's a movie that's out. And uh, with the movie being out, and you knowing Pastor Chuck as uh, as uh, well as you do, I see him as a father. You've yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. Is there uh, anticipation on what you would like to see happen with the portrayal of this? And as you mentioned, it's not a documentary, yeah. uh, but yet you are part of it in a lot of ways. Your relationship with Pastor Chuck was close in a lot of ways. And, and now that you're, I don't want to say an outsider pastor, but somebody who's been through it, uh, was a part of initially of it, is there an anticipation that you hope to see that people would really see from this movie as you were initially a part of it? You know, it's very hard for us to ever go back into the past. That doesn't happen. So I think what this movie can do is it can go along with the flow of the Spirit as the Spirit is working right now. You know, with this, this talk that's even being publicized as revival in Asbury and all of that, uh, I do believe that God can use this because I... I know that many, including us, including this church, have prayed for a long time that God would once again pour His Spirit yeah. out. And uh, in these latter days, I believe that that is something I've been looking for and expecting for Him to do as He's going to gather us up for that moment when He takes us Amen. home. And yeah. so I feel that these are pieces that the Lord is putting together uh, where this dry, dry nation that has done everything that we, that we as a nation can do to drive God out of everything, you know, and, and to question everything about faith and the purpose of faith. And yet you're seeing that there are young people who are, quen- who are hungry. They're, they have a quest to, for truth. And at the moment that these people are looking for truth, we've got churches that are no longer teaching real truth, but have become caught up with other things, whether it's prosperity and health, whether it's uh, all these prophecies that they're giving, or whether it is thinking that somehow we all need to be equipped to be great voters, whatever that may be, we're going to lose the opportunity to influence people 
And in doing so, I think that we can quench the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned from my pastor, and what I as a Calvary Chapel pastor of many years standing now, what I have discovered is stay true to the Word, seek the Holy Spirit, encourage people to move in the things of the Lord, and hopefully and prayerfully we'll see an awakening Amen. in the young people, because the young people have been told there's no God, there's no truth, and their lives are drying up. They're, they're, they're hungry, just like I was. Just like I was. Tell me the truth so I can, I can know what is truth and embrace it. And I think pastors need it. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for giving us some insight. And it's a, for me, it's amazing to see that this uh, movie is out. And I haven't seen it either. I have not gone. But to know that we have somebody here who was initially a part I of it there. Yeah. And, and, and seen it. And, and so it, it poses, and this is for off camera or another time, raises a lot of questions for me like maybe I should just go see it but I don't know uh, about because there's you know a lot of different things but eventually we'll have it here yes yes and there'd be a great opportunity for people to invite yeah, their have friends an opportunity and I'll share with them afterwards like have a Q&A or something yeah. where they would ask questions and mm -hmm. so that would be great and and you know people can bring their friends and family and hear somebody who's been through there or been was a part of it and mm -hmm. hear the heart of it and kind of fill in the gaps mm -hmm. and so but I hope it's a tool that it points not only the young people to Jesus Christ, but it points everybody. People need so, Amen. well, thank you, Pastor David. I want to invite you to our our Sunday morning services at eight thirty and ten forty five. This, uh, or actually Wednesday tomorrow, yep. you're taking us to Romans chapter Romans two. Romans chapter two, and uh, it's been a rich study. It's powerful. And so, come on out. Amen. Come on out and invite your friends seven p.m. and then Sunday morning eight thirty and ten forty five of as you're taking us through the book of Mark. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you.